it's the next level. Hey, my name is Ross Marquand and I play Red Skull. You are listening to Panels to Pixels podcast. Check it out. Thor. Calm down. Thor Odinson, Crown Prince of Asgard. You've been chosen. Oh, we're in a pub. I know this place. Welcome back to the show, panelers. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this is a going to be a spoiler-full podcast about the final episode of Season 1 of Marvel's What If. So this week we're covering What If the Watcher Broke His Oath. And Steve, what was the synopsis on this? So the synopsis is short and sweet. The Watcher gathers heroes all across the multiverse for one final battle against Ultravision. I guess that's what we're canonized calling him ultra oh really they that, that i don't in- know i i don't know i'm just looking from the i'm just looking from the synopsis now well, no shouldn't... no was that in the synopsis yeah that's what it said the synopsis says ultra vision but it's got it in quotes so i don't know wow if that's what they're if that's what they're you know going with ultimately i, I was or... just having fun with it last time when we recorded <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's hilarious Okay, I did not know that. I didn't even look at the synopsis on the the episode. Okay, cool. It's funny how I uh, came up with my own idea about it, and it just shows up as fact, I guess. Yeah, very cool. Uh, uh, Yeah. Uh, Well, yeah, this was uh, an interesting episode, nonetheless, and I just love a lot of aspects about it. What about you? Uh, What are your thoughts? Yeah, I loved it. I, I thought it was I thought it was a great way to end the season, and and I can't wait for season two. And one of the things that kept occurring to me as I was was doing my notes and watching the second the second time was that you know we said after a bunch of these uh, episodes we said we'd like to see a continuation mm. of their stories into season two, but really with with kind of getting this this ending here, where we got to see where each. And I'll I'll talk some more about it when we get into my notes. When we get to kind of see where they all ended up and how they all ended up, I'm almost like I'm satisfied with the season. You know, I'm satisfied with the wrap up. And, uh, you know, of course, like I said, you know, there is that little last line to the watcher where he tells Captain Carter that 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 the, you know, the universe she's in is going to need her. So maybe, you know, maybe we'll we'll see Captain Carter or like we've already discussed, maybe, you know, there'll be a live action Captain Carter down the road somewhere. Multiverse of Madness or well, I don't think Multiverse of Madness. I think it'd be a little too quick, but who knows? You never know. It's going to be a strange thing. Yes, it is. The the funny thing is, is too, the, what I really liked and loved about this, if you think about all the episodes and everything that Watcher has been building up as far as his, like, just watching everybody, he picked and basically plucked everybody from different universes that he liked from their story plot or their story point and how strong they were. Very similar to Nick Fury and his idea with the Avengers Initiative. But yeah. in this case, it's the Guardians of the Multiverse <laughs> initiative. <love> that. <laughs> yeah, I love and, that. And it just all came together almost similar to, let's say, how the original Avengers came to be. If you think about it, everybody had their own individual stories uh, in their own movies. And then with this, they had their own individual what ifs in their own particular universe. And then Watcher was able to pluck them all together into this middle verse, as it were to deal with uh, a common threat or this this common enemy that they all would have eventually within our own universe. Uh, especially Widow, too, because Widow's universe was destroyed. And yeah, the- and isn't that interesting that Disney just, just clears up all their, their issues with ScarJo, and even though I know her voice wasn't used here, but yeah. suddenly we have a universe that has a Black Widow. Yes. That uh, so, and it doesn't have to be Scar Joe. It could it be like it could be Lake Bell herself who was voicing Scarlett Johansson because Lake Bell is, like I stated before, and another a previous podcast is is an actress, so she doesn't have to look like Scarlett Johansson. It could just be another Black Widow or Natasha Romanoff that 
is very much the same character, but looks very different. Very much like I, I stated when we, we were talking about uh, Spider-Man, when we we're going to get Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire as their versions of Spider-Man as well, or Peter Parker. So they could easily just replace her, which is scary, but I would prefer my Scarlett Johansson as Black Widow. Right. But, right. <laughs> uh, but if they had to, they can easily put Lake Bell or somebody cast as the new Black Widow in a uh, alternate universe version. So, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I like how you're thinking too about that. It's like, wow. And I just kind of wrapped it up and it could be anybody at this point. <laughs> All right. Wow. But I'm sure we're going to go into a lot more when we get into our top fives. Absolutely. That was unexpected. What? So I guess I should go first? Yeah, why don't you go first? Well, I, first off, I, I love the reintroduction of all the characters. So we got a little snippet of each and where we left off. So, you know, Widow has her own issue. She's taking the same storyline that uh, Steve had in, a, in the beginning of Winter Soldier with his little... Uh, espionage jumping out of the plane having having the uh the talk to widow about dating somebody and you know it's the same thing with peggy and widow and it's pretty funny they're just chums they're good buddies and then we see everybody else just the same like uh at the very end of what if uh what was a killmonger saved uh tony stark that particular episode which i found interesting I was not a huge fan of it, but it was very interesting. But it, it showed how vicious and evil he is deep down. And I'm surprised that Watcher brought him on board. But we see Pepper and Shiri, and they're running towards him when he gets plucked out by the Watcher. And then <laughs> the funniest part is Thor. <laughs> him, he keeps like, Thor? Thor? <laughs> and he just grabs him like a doll, like an action yeah. figure, and brings him up. And Thor's uh, reaction was priceless. It, to me, it was really cool to have that where we see where they stand off, where they come into play and where Watcher brings them into place. And then at the very end, obviously this adds to it, he puts them back where they were supposed to, all but Widow. But to me, I, I really enjoyed that aspect, that thought and theory of they could easily go back to their own time or universe at that given timeline and not remember a damn thing. <laughs> yeah. I, and I'm not sure about that if they didn't remember or not, because remember Widow drops in and Fury, Fury knows that Black Widow is dead. Yes. You know, and so he says, oh, you're not my Black Widow, but mm -hmm. you, you got her same fire, her same spirit, you know? And so I don't think they, I don't think they forgot being guardians of the multiverse. I think, I think they just, he just dropped them right back where they, where they were and, and okay. gave them the opportunity to start over again. But no, I'm, I'm the same way. This was my number five as well. I absolutely loved this, the whole winter soldier beginning with attacking the boat. I loved that uh, George St. Pierre came back to voice, to voice Bat Bat Rock. Rock. You know, uh, <laughs> it was great. It, just all the returning voices that we got. And we'll talk some more about it as we, as we go forward. But yeah, it was great. And you mentioned that, that return of the, the Killmonger. What if they really kind of closed that story out? because Killmonger wasn't returned from her. He's stuck in that, that prison prison yep. with, with uh, Armin Ultra, Armin U Ultra, Vi U Ultra Armin. I have what? something down below that <laughs> might work with it. Okay. Too. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll get to it. But, but Arnim, to, yeah. Arnim Ultan or Kiltron. <laughs> Kiltron. I like Kiltron. Uh, yeah. So it is, it is kind of cool that they kind of close that story out. And like, I know several uh, other, well, other people in podcasts that we're talking about, if we're going to get a return back, if we're going to get to see Pepper and Shuri, you know, kind of go after Killmonger. And now they don't have to. So. Yeah. Of course, they don't know what happened to him, but. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, it's a good thing that they don't know. And if he never comes back, it's a great thing. <laughs> there you go. So that was my that was my number five as well. So it moves us to your number four. Well, my number four, that would be the way the Watcher assembles the team. I already mentioned it. That That's the big kick out of it for me. I just found it so, so amusing and fun. And But an old fuddy-duddy bringing these people together. Uh, I just loved when he got around to Thor, though. That one scene just, like, still... <laughs> floors me and makes me laugh and giggle every time. 
Yeah. Uh, my my number four is uh, is is kind of a specific one with that with when you're talking about when he's assembling the team he gets to Tony Stark and and Gamora uh, to pick and he he tells Tony Stark that he's not chosen to do to do this mission yes. but he does he does uh, pick up Gamora he calls her the destroyer of Thanos I think or something something like that so maybe that's one of those uh, episodes we're going to get in season two we're going to get you know what if. Uh, Gamora destroyed Thanos, or or whatever. We'll get to we'll get to hear how she built that whole stone crusher uh, device that she had that I thought was was really really cool, even though it didn't work. Yeah, and my number three. Well, that would be. I just love the fact that we get a name for the group, Guardians of the Multiverse. Now, not not Guardians of the Galaxy, but we did have people talking about that. Or alluded to it because we did get to see uh, Peter Quill in a, in the very beginning when they were plucking T'Challa, and Ego was there saying, "Oh, well, this, what was he saying? This will only hurt for another thousand years, son, yeah. or something like yeah, that." Yeah, something like that. And uh, I think that was Kurt Russell, wasn't it? Yes, yes, it was in the credits. It was Kurt Russell for that one line. <laughs> Wow. So, yeah. So basically, in this whole in this whole season, he's had what two lines? Because he says one line at the very end of that uh, the T'Challa episode, and then he says this one line. So really, but it was Kurt Russell. Yes, I did check the credits for that. So awesome. Uh, so my next one is is just uh, you know it was one of those things I was kind of proud of myself story wise because from the moment that Killmonger picks up that uh, Ultrabot head or whatever we're calling the the robots, I knew that something he was going to be cooking something up, and I, I just love that we get that at the at the end, and and Doctor Strange realizes you know that the Watcher has known all along what was going to happen, and it's it was all set up for basically a way to imprison these guys because. Dr. Strange realizes there at the end, no, we're just supposed to separate the stones from his body. We weren't actually supposed mm. to destroy them. We weren't supposed to do anything with them. Um, I did get a little, a little confused um, with the whole, and I may have this later in my notes as well, the, the telekinesis that they both kind of used. Like did, did vision have telekinesis before the mind stone? Before or, the, no, be, well, he no. Went, we never really saw him before the mind stone. Okay, you're right. You're right. So uh, we don't know if the Mind Stone gave him his telekinesis or because then, because Killmonger then has telekinesis as well, mm -hmm. right? Because he lifts the stones out of. So I don't know if maybe there was like a residual effect of having the stones on their bodies that gave them this tel this telekinetic kind of fight over the stones that distracts them enough to get them into the the prism, prison, 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 prison. <laughs> that's really tough to say. Um, yeah. You know, and I love that that, that, that Strange now kind of has a mission and he's kind of become the Watcher, but he's only watching one universe instead of the multiverse. Mm, very true. My number two, well, that would be the, the teamwork that they all, you know, how they were working together with all their abilities. Strange's protection spell for everyone. T'Challa and his little sticky fingers that Yandu had mentioned said he I has. Love that. And getting yeah. the Soul Stone from Ultron. Peggy's ability to hold on to Thor's hammer and take flight. Very similar to what uh, we get with uh, Steve Rogers in Endgame. He gets to hold it at least, but in this case it was just really to propel her. Like they did in Endgame with uh, Spider-Man when, you know, Peter was web-slinging and he had to hold on to it for uh, speed. Plus seeing the zombies and we get the standoff between zombie Wanda and Ultron or Ultra Vision, as it were. <laughs> and yeah, that, this was yeah, that, go, go ahead, that, finish no, up. No, no, I'm just saying that was that was a pretty cool standoff. We finally get her come back. But of course there is no recognition between her uh between Ultron or Ultra Vision, as it were, because he knows nothing of her. They didn't have that relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. The zombie's face, too, though. It's like, eh? <laughs> all crying and upset. Yeah. yeah. This was my number two as well. Just the, the whole the whole battle scene, the animation of it. Again, we've talked about this every week, I think. The animation was great in, in mm -hmm. that, those those moments. When the zombies first started falling out and Strange said something like, it's, it's who came with them. I thought it was going to be Thanos zombie, mm. you know, with the other, with the gauntlet. Yeah, you but would think, it, right? But then it ended up being zombie Scarlet Witch, which is just as powerful as well because we saw with Captain Marvel, you know, last week, or, yeah, we saw with Captain Marvel last week that it, she 
I mean, she got defeated ultimately, but she could go toe to toe with with Ultra Vision, and the same here with with Zombie Scarlet Witch. She kind of goes toe to toe with with Ultra Vision. I wish we'd gotten to see a little bit more of that fight between the two of them, though. But uh, but yeah, I absolutely grinned every time I saw the, the, the two times when I watched it, the Scarlet Witch coming out as a zombie and having that look on her face, and just loved it. Mm. So that would bring me to my number one. That would be Arnim Zola coming back to save the day, or sort of save the day at a certain point, and corrupt Ultron. He gets inside, and I just love the exchange. It's like, oh, this feels better. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> oh, it feels like I have a brand new set of legs. Widow was able to use that USB arrow in this episode to stop Ultron with Arnim inside, which was part of that particular episode from the last one. And I found it great that they were able to utilize it this time and we get to see Arnim come into play but in the end we get Killmonger being Killmonger and the team sees him as who he really is at the very end of what he you know he's very destructive himself very much like Ultron very much like even Arnim Zola himself who would be uh, Arnim Vision against Kiltron and they just go at it and but Strange realizes that they were only meant to, to keep the stones off of Ultron or somebody's body at that point just to to end that battle or end this issue that they've have with uh, Ultron or anybody who has those particular stones within that universe. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love that, that. This is my number one as well. Just that whole that whole battle there at the end of the plan uh, that that Thor kind of messes up but doesn't really. And it was it was great to see that whole them each kind of stealing the Mind Stone at different times too. And you see the Mind Stone kind of skittering around the ground, and, and Ultron's trying to grab it, and somebody else is trying to grab it. It's all so that because it distracts him and it, it it confuses him when he doesn't have the Mind Stone. Obviously, um, I love that battle when Strange brings out the tentacled being which we know is a um what did the the oh, what did the watcher call it a, a celestial or something oh no, not a celestial um uh, i can't remember in the earlier episode he called him he called it something mm. that was was like a big bad basically so he he calls on the power of that tentacled thing to to kind of help him fight uh ultra vision and yeah it was just everything about that whole battle there at the end was was cool and seemed like you, we've already talked about the realization on Strange's face that it was always meant to end this way with them being trapped in that that prism universe I'm not going to say a prison again that's <laughs> prism prison <laughs> <laughs> say that five times fast <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> Um, I think we both got a lot of notes. Uh, you just kind of want to go back and forth over sure. what we've not talked about. Let me see. What's my first one uh, that we haven't really discussed? Um, I thought at the very beginning, it, it only happened really once. I, I, I thought it was going to happen more often when I wrote this note. But uh, Doctor Strange's powers, they're kind of at right before they start the fight, his powers kind of glitch on him, you know, and he's got to like grab his arm and, and hold it back from changing. And oh, I think yeah. a widow or somebody was like, uh, are you having a problem? He's like, no, I'm fine. You know? So it was something out of like almost like a an old horror movie from Universal, like mm -hmm. the werewolf or something. It's like oh, it's like yeah, yeah. You know, they try to hide something. One for me would be uh, the pub scene it was pretty much taken straight out of from Captain America the, the first movie that we had, where all the Howling Commandos and Cap show up for a drink, and eventually they meet up with Peggy Carter there. And shows up, and I think there was a, supposed to be a dance at one point. Yeah, I love that. That Strange mentions that he read it in her. He read about it in her autobiography. Yeah. Then she says, "Oh, so you're Captain, whatever you you have a Captain Carter too." And he's like, "Well, actually, I have a Captain America. That's Steve Rogers." So, you know, I don't know if he actually meant he read about it in Steve Rogers's and put together that they were the same kind of situation, or if he actually got his hands on. The Captain Carter biography. I, I don't know, but thought that was that was kind of interesting. I love that we got a wait what from Ultron this time. Mm. We've heard that a, a couple times from the Watcher. The the whole wait what uh, yeah. <laughs> thing. Uh, so I thought that was great. That that was kind of a running gag through this season. And I wonder if they're going to keep that up in season two, or they're going to come up with something different in season two. That'd be cool. One for me would be Thor falling out of the door of the pub, and it was a lot like something out of. Doctor Who and someone hanging outside of the, the TARDIS door. Mm -hmm. I thought it was just really amusing. It just gave me those vibes. When you see him out there, it's, oh, and they pull him back in. <laughs> 
I love that that whole thing between Nat and Captain Carter there at the end where we see, even though they're from different universes, they still have that same relationship. And Captain Carter says something, you know, she says, um, I'll be the shield, you'll be the sword. And Nat says, well, really, I'll be the arrow. And, you know, earlier she had said something like, oh, well, no, I'm, it's really more like a dagger or something like that. And so I, I just love, again, we've talked about the relationship between these two that I thought was really, really cool. And I hope we get a chance to see something like it on screen somewhere but that that whole sequence of events where nat fires the arrow and captain carter jumps on ultron's head and she's able to pull his helmet back to expose his eye because mm. it didn't i didn't figure it out until the second watch that's what nat had told her nat said i need a clear i i can make the shot but i need a clear field or something like that and yes. that's when when so Captain Carter pulled up the helmet so that she had a clear shot at, uh, at Ultra Vision's eye. And I just I, I just thought that was really, really cool the way they worked together. Mm. That's cool. Uh, yeah, they make a great team. And, you know, it, it just shows that it would be funny to see Lake Bell as Widow in a live action have uh, Haley Atwell as Captain Carter. And then maybe, if we're lucky, maybe Chris Evans comes back as... Uh, Captain America and see all three on, on screen together. That would be great. Them working together as they do well, as we, we know that they can. I would look forward to that, but I'm just wishing out loud at this point. Uh, I just love the uh, Doctor Strange and his attempt at a toast when he gets them all alcohol <laughs> before everything, before, you know, Thor erupts with excitement with his with Mjolnir and launches out some electro bolts mm -hmm. and whatever and then Ultron comes in but yeah. the, the way he kept rambling on just reminded me of um, if you remember the hangover mm -hmm. and <laughs> it just it just reminded me of Zach Galifianakis and him trying to make a toast and not making sense and then he just like everybody shuts down to Doctor Strange so well, what he's saying is this <laughs> Uh, I love the the wrap up by the the watcher at the end, and he, we see these little clips of when he returned them. We see Gamora uh, back with with Tony Stark, and he's in the the giant Iron Man suit. Uh, we see T'Challa, and we see T'Challa, Star Lord T'Challa, with the Dairy Queen Peter Quill there at the end together yeah. as well. And I'm assuming they're fight probably fighting Ego, uh, and then we get to see Thor reuniting with Jane. I thought it was just really really cool to, that they gave us those kind of like I said at the beginning of the recording, they gave us those kind of wrap up moments that now I don't really need to see. I mean, it would be cool to see T'Challa and Peter Quill fight next to each other against Ego, but I don't need that. No. Um, you know, the Gamora episode is really the only one that at this point I really would like to get in the future uh, at some point. Uh, the one thing that I didn't realize too, I don't think they've ever brought it up before. I could be just been falling asleep every time I go to the movies uh, with uh, Gamora. They're saying that she was the survivor of Sakaar. And I'm like, wait, hold on. Sakaar, wasn't that the planet that uh, Hulk went to and had children with in, uh, in the comics? If one of your listeners are out there and you're mad at me for not remembering, please message me or <laughs> like mm -hmm. leave a comment. I need to realize or find out if that were the truth because it just came to my head. Because she's green. Everybody else there is green too, so I'm assuming. I don't know if it came up if in, in Infinity War when they showed the flashback with uh, Thanos and him obliterating her planet, or uh, or this was just something else that they uh, they threw in there. But I I could be wrong. But I thought that was interesting. It was like wow, red flag. What's that? It's a car. Hmm. Wait. Well, I know they've mentioned the car in the MCU has been, it wasn't that, I thought that was the collector where the, or the game, the Jeff Goldblum's character was. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So they've had Sakaar in the. Yeah. Or, but. Uh, oh, okay. Maybe but, something different. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I, to me, it's just like, Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. But it, it's just one of those, uh, brain spurts that just came in. I had to say it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, it's interesting. Um, I think we both have the same final note that we haven't discussed yet, which is that mid credit scene with. No, uh, I have with, one more that's different. Oh, do you? Okay, well, let me go with this one then, because I, I, I just was, uh, you know, that mid credit scene where we get to see the Hydra Stomper again, and yeah. I'm, I'm sure we're meant to, to at least in our brains, we're meant to assume that Steve is in the Hydra Stomper and somehow got preserved, similar to how 
he was preserved in ice and mm-hmm. was able to be brought back to life. So I'm assuming that's the storyline we're supposed to get there, but it'll be interesting. I, I, again, I don't know if I really need to see another version of that, or uh, it might be interesting. I don't know. It's we'll leave it up to the writers. Or maybe they just do a, a quick story about it. Who yeah. knows? The one thing I was going to bring up was uh, we get to see two time stunts being used at the same time in the same scene. If you think about it, mm-hmm. Dr. Strange uses the eye of Agamotto, which has the time stone in it from his world. And then Ultron tries to use the, the time stone to regain the soul stone at the same time. And it, they're battling each other for like changing the time. Oh, that's a good catch. I did not catch that. I'm going to have to, to, I know I saw something going on with the two green stones, but it didn't click in my head. What was, what was happening? That's a cool catch. Good job. Yeah. I thought that was, I was like, wait a minute. They're both using Infinity Stones at the same time for the same purpose. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I thought that was pretty cool. So we've got some quotes here. My first one is, Captain Carter, the soldier lost in time, you have been chosen. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought that was great. Each time the – the he, but like you mentioned with Thor, he never got to finish his statement. Yeah, you he have kept stumbling every time he tried to make that announcement and Thor yeah. <laughs> let him – uh, one for me is what if his name was Steve and that was Widow to Carter regarding a date with someone in S.H.I.E.L.D. And then Peggy goes, ouch, just when we were becoming pals, Widow, this is very similar in a uh, relationship that uh, Widow had with uh, Steve Rogers. Uh, and then I just love Thor had me laughing several times in this episode when, when he's like, is there a universe with Chinese food that's open for delivery? Tummy getting rumbly. <laughs> yeah, they always made that character. And a lot of people hated that particular, uh, what if Thor was an only child? Yeah. I didn't I get to it. say it last week. I didn't make my comments. I enjoyed it because it was a good laugh. Yes, it was a bit over the top with its humor. And a lot of, I can understand why a lot of people would be like, I didn't like it. Yeah. But, you know, to me, I found it enjoyable, especially with all the actors that were in it, too. You got Seth Green. Jeff yeah, Goldblum. Everybody yeah, so came many, back. Yeah, so many for, people came back for yeah, that episode. Yeah, it was amazing. people. It's just amazing. Yeah. So, you know, I, I love the fact that they go back. And it's like Thor gave that humoristic element within this episode, too. So at least it wasn't all completely serious. And my second to last one is uh, interesting. Usually you people are much easier to kill. I thought the, from Ultron and, you know, oh, it's, yeah. it's, it's kind of a, it's kind of a bittersweet. I don't laugh. I don't mean to laugh at it. I don't mean to make light of it, but it's, it's something that we've talked about is there's been so many of these episodes where we've seen the Avengers get killed, you mm-hmm. know, and sometimes it is pretty easy. Sometimes it's a little bit harder, but, uh, but yeah, so Ultron saying that they were easy to kill was, uh, was one, was my next one. Next to one for me would be Peter Quill saying, I got it. Yeah. Hang back with the giant baby man cape dude. And that's after T'Challa saves him from Ego and tells him to leave it to them to take care of it. <laughs> uh, and then my last one is is the Watcher to Captain Carter when he at the end. I've already kind of talked about it where he says, trust me, that time, that world is going to need Captain Carter. Mm. Jeffrey Wright, so good at, yeah. at, with the voice in this. My last one would be the Watcher saying, yep, I picked them. And that's after Gamora talks about the Stone Crushers and and the little skeptical look and laugh about them as a group by the Watcher. (laughs) It's just like, yep, mm, yep, they're a bunch of clowns. (laughs) I picked them. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, very hilarious. Very hilarious. (laughs) Sorry, I was adding a note to our... our, uh feedback at the end because okay. I realized I realize we're at that point. So, <laughs> All right. So uh, what is it? Uh, I, w- I just added to our feedback. So uh, we can just go into podcast recommendations if you want. Sure. Uh, mine is, is Wilhelm and uh, right here on the Next Level Network with Ben Beck. He picks a topic and gets uh, one of his friends to, to join him talking about a certain genre of movies or uh, favorite movies or from an actor or anything like that. Uh, they don't reveal to each other what their choices are before recording. So it's always fun uh, to hear them kind of interact and talk about the, the different movies and when they have the same. I was on uh, a few weeks ago for uh, Top 5 War Movies and we had the same number three. That was pretty cool yeah that was pretty cool i like that uh i don't have anything because i wasn't prepared for recommendations 
Okay. <laughs> well, we'll go right into to, to, to how people can submit their feedback uh, to us. As always, we can be heard on any podcast player of choice, Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, or whatever you use to, to listen to your podcast. Uh, if ratings are available, we would love for you to give us a rating. Um, you know, a five star would be really nice. Uh, you know, a one star, that would be rude. But, you know, hey, wh- whatever. Uh, any publicity is good publicity. Uh, but uh, <laughs> you can check out our website. It's Panels to Pixels Podcast. Dot com. You can also submit uh, feedback to our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash panels to pixels. We have an email address, which is panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels to pixels one, the two spelled out right in the middle and the number one at gmail.com. We have a YouTube channel, which is panels to pixels podcast. Just search for it. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe to us. And we do have an Instagram now. So if you are on Instagram and you would like to interact with us on that platform, we are at panels to pixels podcast on Instagram. Cool. And as far as the, the next episode that we'll be working on, we might take a little bit of a break. Steve and I are, and are going to be at a get together in Pennsylvania meet up with a bunch of our other friends from a Patreon group that we belong to through Podcastica. So uh, we'll probably take about a week or two break, and then uh, we'll probably move into something new. Uh, I believe Hawkeye is coming out in November, so we were talking about that. I'm hoping that by then I had seen Shang-Chi, and I'll be able to uh, cover that with Steve at some point before. It Hawkeye really is good. Out. It really is a good movie. So, so I'll I'll check that out, and then we'll go from there, and we'll keep you guys up to date. So now we're at that part where where else can listeners hear us? Well, I could be heard right here on Panels to Pixels podcast, as always, but you could also hear me on Adrenaline Cinema podcast as well, and that can be found on the Pyrocore Entertainment Network, and there. Uh, if you go to PirateCoreEntertainment.com, you'll find Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, Run For Your Lives, and Watched It in the 80s. So you have those three podcasts from my network over there that you can listen to, as well as my own. Actually, after, oddly enough, I re- loaded it today, which is a uh, an episode of Adrenaline Cinema, but I posted it on Panels to Pixels because it made more sense. Because the movie was based off a trade comic. And Wendy and I covered it, and it was called Atomic Blonde, and that's with Charlize Theron. And uh, she says halfway through it a couple of times, saying, "Yeah, you should really put it on panels to pixels." So I reached out to Ben, and Ben gave me the go ahead, and I I put it on our panels to pixels podcast feed as well, so you have that to listen to as well. So I suggest checking that out. But it's also on the Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. Next week on Adrenaline or the next time or upload for Adrenaline Cinema Podcast will probably be John Wick 2. So check that out. Very cool. Well, I can I can be heard right here on Panels to Pixels podcast, and I also send voicemails to various friends' podcasts that they let me uh, send my voicemails to and play my messages there. I, you know, it, it's absolutely really cool to hear my voice on other podcasts, and uh, obviously, if I get a chance to guest on anything, I will always let you all know. Yes, keep us let us keep us notified so we all know. That would be so cool. So, thank you, everyone, for listening. I'm Steve, and I'm Mark. And this was Panels to Pixels, and we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody.